fasting and, and everything. But obviously this is a big deal. Verse number four says, so Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved and she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. And, and one of the things that we see in this entire chapter and what it kind of focuses around is this communication between Esther and Mordecai. And Mordecai here is the solid Christian. He's the one strong in faith. He's the one that's, that's you know, completely sold out to serve the Lord. He doesn't care what's going to happen if he doesn't bow down and serve Mordecai. He's just going to stand on the word of God, and that's totally who he represents here. This is part of who Mordecai is. He's a great man of God here, willing to make these stands. And as we see his communication with Esther, he's right in all the advice that he's giving her. And Esther is the, is the, you know, the picture of someone who's just a watered-down, weak Christian. And we need to learn from this. Because right? we don't want to be the watered down, weak Christian. And what you'll notice, and you've probably already experienced this in your own life, is that you know, even amongst other believers, amongst other people who are saved, oftentimes when conflict arises, when there's some kind of persecution or turmoil or some kind of you know, offense that's going on, what they want to do is just kind of brush her under the rug, not worry about it. Oh, oh, you're in sackcloth. Here, just put these clothes on. You're making a big scene. You know, don't, don't, don't cause any attention. We don't want any drama. We don't want anything like that. You know, that's kind of the attitude of many people who just, you know, they, get, they may be getting offended easily because they're not as strong in the faith. But it's something that happens and something we see happen all the time. And obviously, for people who are younger in their faith and, and you know, spiritually younger, we want to help them grow. And it's part of growth to, to not really always just be so steadfast and strong in your faith, but you don't want to stay there, right? And we also need to call it out and say, no, you know, you're acting like a spiritual child when you're not willing to stand and stand strong in the Word of God. And you need to grow up. And there's a lot of Christians out there that need to grow up and stop. Actually, you know, what, what you're doing is, what you end up doing without even probably intending to is discouraging those who are making the stand, discouraging those who are trying to stand in the Word of God by trying to get them to stop doing what they're doing. Because this is what Esther was trying to get them to stop. Like, it, it's a, the, the sackcloth and ashes is a public expression. And he goes, he wasn't allowed inside the king's gate. He's going right up to the gate. He's going right up to that point to be seen, right? To know, hey, this is a big deal. I'm in sackcloth and ashes, and we're weeping and wailing and crying out and making sure people understand what's going on, that God's people are under attack, and this is a big deal, and it's not something you're just going to sit by and take quietly and just you know, allow yourself to be um, carted off to the slaughterhouse. Right? Something needs to be done. Something needs to be said. It's not just going to be... Uh, you're just going to be taking it quietly. But oftentimes, the weak Christians, they want to avoid call conflict at all costs and just, oh, no, no, here, put this on. And oftentimes, it's the weak Christian that's going to you know, condemn you for making a stand. It, the weak Christian would, would be, and this didn't happen in the story, like, like we don't see the evidence of this happening, but it's the same type of thing where they would say, oh, well, why didn't you just bow down? I mean, we're all bowing down to Haman. Now look what you did. See, you didn't bow down. Now he's going after all of us. Way to go, Mordecai. huh? Look, we don't stand with Mordecai. He's an extremist. He's crazy. You know, hey, if the king says to bow down to Haman, we're just going to bow down to Haman. That's what the weak Christian thinks. That's what the weak Christian's going to do. And they're going to blame, actually, the bold man of God who's saying, no, I'm standing on the, the, the word of the Lord. I'm not going to just succumb to this. I'm not going to just bow down to anybody or anything just because some man says to do it. I'm going to obey God rather than man. He ought to be exalted. He ought to be lifted up. He ought to be looked to as a hero of the faith. And instead, the weak Christian is going to point him out as being, oh, he's a troublemaker. It's exactly what the children of Israel did to Moses. I mean, they were slaves. They're in bondage, right? And Moses is, is he must feel all, by, all alone. God sent him Aaron to go help him out. And they're going before Pharaoh, saying, hey, let my people go, right? They're, they're trying to bring redemption. They're trying to bring freedom to the people, to the children of Israel. 
And what happens in the short term is that Pharaoh starts making, you know, starts persecuting and making their jobs harder. And then the people get all upset at Moses, at Aaron. Oh man, you know, at least we, you know, we used to be able to get our job done. Now they're just trying to make it much harder. What are you doing this for? It's like we're trying to free you. I'm doing what God said to do. And ultimately, that should answer, that should end all questions. Well, why do you got to do that? Well, why do you got to preach against the Sodomites? Why do you got, you know, the weak Christians are going to say, why do you got to do that? Now you're going to bring all this negative attention on Christian, and you're going you're gonna to push people away from the faith. Yeah, Mordecai was really pushing people away because he wouldn't bow down to wicked Haman, satanic, devilish Haman. He didn't bring a threat on people. Wicked Haman is the one who's bringing the threat against people. Right. Don't put the, the, you know, it's the same stupid mentality that people say, oh, well, if you don't vote for Trump, then you voted for Biden or you voted for Hillary. It's like, look, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, it's not the same thing at all. If you don't vote for this person, then you vote for that person. Why well, didn't vote for any of them? Amen. So then who did I vote for? <laughs> well, by not voting, that means you voted for, it's like, you're stupid.